Hi everyone, welcome back to Babylon Irons. Uh, yet again, it's transfer window time. You know what that means. <laughs> West Ham have been linked to probably player 155 already in the transfer window. <laughs> so, but the the player we've been linked to, Sloff, is a good player. It's a player that me and you have talked up quite a bit over the past probably two to three seasons. Um, was part of a brilliant double pivot last season, which saw one of those then go off uh, into Madrid for around about 80 to 90 million uh, euros. The man in question... Is this man Youssef Fafana? He is uh, a powerhouse of a midfielder. I think it's probably fair to say uh, one of those you argue is probably the closest built to Rice in terms of his the way his overall play, game is. Um, but before we get into who Fafana is, why we're looking at him, you know, let's first start off with the actual story itself. So uh, it came out this afternoon, or sorry, this morning from Get French Football News uh, via L'Equipe and uh, RMC Sport, both discussing that West Ham are looking at the 24-year-old central midfielder of AS Monaco, who ultimately do not have European football this year. Uh, they failed to qualify. So they are obviously going to be looking to offload some players, which is going to be uh, interesting for them because it's not something that they've... Not had for a while. They've had Europe quite a bit recently. And um, yeah, it's a sloth. What are your thoughts, on, first off, on, on the link to Fafana? Uh, I think it's a brilliant move. Um, and it's for the prize reported as well. I think it's a, a pretty much a 10 out of 10 transfer, in my opinion. Um, he is one of those players who I think shone probably about 18 months ago over that course of last, not last season, but the season before when he was with uh, Chiromene. Um, and I think it'd be fair to say as well, he was probably the slightly better performer of the two. Um, yes. And I, I love, <laughs> I love too many. I, I've just, I've been like, I was talking about him for a good long time about he should be the player we look at. Obviously he, he, the way he grew was so rapid that, no chance whatsoever, but yeah, completely agree. He most likely was the stronger performer of the two. And I think um, coming into this season, one my my only reserve about him, and we've kind of touched on this in our little group chat, is just that when Monaco really kind of tailed off at the end of the season, this season, and they didn't qualify for Europe, he kind of just downed his tools. And I think it was the combination of they had quite they have quite a young side. Obviously, um, with some Ben Yedder does tip those scales quite dramatically, but um, he's a fantastic performer. Um, but the younger players in that side did kind of down tools. Now that might worry quite a few people. Um, I do, however, think that he. He is someone who's got a very good work ethic. Generally, um, I don't know if this is if if this is common knowledge or what what. But when he was a, a prior to um, being a first team starter, kind of at Strasbourg, he was actually a pizza delivery boy. So um, it's one of those things where he he's he wasn't always just looking to. Well, he wasn't just banking on him being a footballer. He's got that work ethic in him and he does really want to succeed in everything he does. Um, but we'll get to the area that he really shines, which is just breaking up play and being an absolute wrecking ball um, in that centre of the park. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, a, a little feather in the cap for us as well. It's yet another player. <clears throat> so that's three, I think, in this window so far that have been linked to West Ham that we have also highlighted on our own shortlist. Um, so this came out, obviously, as you can see, 25th of May, just before the end of the season, we were already stating that Yusuf Afana, when we're talking around Declan Rice replacements, obviously we understand a replacement for Declan Rice isn't uh, an easy thing to find and it's something that people are uncomfortable with because many will say replaceable. Um, I would go with the idea of no player is irreplaceable because, quite frankly, you look at the money ball kind of thing, you just look at football in general, you can make up a player 
in the aggregate, so to speak, by looking at players, if you take it down to the base points of data as to what you need, and me and Sloth said it countless times, you need two players to replace Declan Rice. Fofana will be one half of that Declan Rice replacement. Um, and, you know, if we just kind of go into some of the kind of things that we think is one of the reasons why he, he should be near the top uh, of our replacement list. And, you know, when you look at this again, that left-hand side uh, is all of the statistics in terms of him based against other teams or other players in the top five leagues playing in centre midfield with over 900 minutes played. As you can see, it's by a large green and it's also quite successfully over, especially from an attacking sense, uh, which is something that he's brought on a lot this season, is well above the average. Again, his passing is a lot above the average. Monaco are a very highly uh, possession-based team, but he's not just one just to concentrate on those kind of simple passes to feet and, and rotate. Um, you know, and this is West Ham Mofsey. There's been a lot of talk sloth about, well, do we need a player who's more defensive? We need a player who can defend. Is Fafana that player? Now, we've talked about too many. It's a player that he allowed to flourish by being that defensive linchpin for them. So I don't think either of us potentially have that concern from a defensive side. But what else would you, you know, raise as a as things to be, you know, excited about, things to look for, to like about uh, Fafana? One of the things that I think is really impressive about him is is how technically gifted he is. Um, in terms of being like you know, as I said, a big, strong, physical unit, he cited Drogba as uh, someone he he really idolised because he is. Um, you know, of Ivorian um, mm. descent. Um, and when he plays, you will see how he just shrugs players off the ball. Yep. He really gets his back into them and, and turns like Drogba um, did so often for Chelsea. But he he is just so comfortable taking the ball in tight spaces, um, a really solid first touch, turning and then playing a pass. And it's something that, uh, you know, we saw Declan do probably the past two seasons. He did it a lot more, started to play long passes and would spin people. Um, I think that's probably one of the main areas I think he is outstanding in. But it is that engine that he's got as well. It's, it's, um, it's something that I think if we signed him, it would give me real confidence that we're not just suddenly going to be exposed in one area. We chatted about Alvarez and we mentioned how he is so much more of a, uh, he's so much more of a defender in terms of that midfield unit. And he would drop deep if we'd signed him. Um, and with Fafana, I think he's someone who, you know, he's going to do that. He's going to be happy to drop deep if he needs to, but he's because his reading of the game is so strong, but, he's also not going to be afraid to bomb forward and he's going to link up with attacks and he's going to try and get involved with play at both ends of the pitch. Whereas someone like Alvarez was a bit more set piece based uh, in his attack mindedness. And Fafana has just got great ability. Now there's also quite a, um, a interesting dynamic where uh, Monaco and PSV had to play each other the other year for European football. Uh, I think it was a Champions League qualifications. And Fofana absolutely wiped the floor with Sangare. You know, an, another very technically gifted player. Um, one that we have both persistently called for. Um, but Fofana really just kind of sat him down. I think at one point he even nutmegged him and just played a killer ball. Um <laughs> He, he's got those sort of performances up his sleeve where he will just go and not embarrass someone, but really show a level um, to them. And in terms of what we can be excited about, I think it's kind of just that, just that little bit of a easing in from losing rice, potentially it's there's, so much to his game that is strong um and i think it's it's a very 
it's a very good relief almost because someone who is that capable um, has so many strings to their bow. It's like a safe pair of hands, you know. Yeah. And as you say, a uh, 35 million uh, euro uh, apparently is the fee. That in itself just represents a fantastic bit of business because we are going to be selling rice north of a hundred million pounds. That is <laughs> at least such a huge wedge of cash to go and buy, say, the Lanzini replacement. We've already talked around uh, <clears throat> Musa uh, earlier today, or if you're watching it when you watch this yesterday, <laughs> um, who would be a great acquisition. Again, that's still 55 million pounds then spent or 55 million euros spent of that 100 million, which still means you can then go and get a real top quality centre forward or even put it on another midfielder. It's, it's that type of flexibility it can give you uh, by buying someone who is such a high talent, but uh, you would argue his fee is small relative to, to, to his ability. And, you know, again, let's to punctuate the points you were raising, Sloth. If we look at the bottom end, <clears throat> only one area defensively is actually below the above average line. And the only one that is below average is the number of aerial jewels that he has. But when we look as to what he actually wins. He wins 87% of all aerial duels. Again, because to the point you was making this off, he, he is physically just so strong and powerful. And when he carries the possession, he, he really does carry it. He, players find it hard to stop him. He's very hard to, to kind of uh, close down or to give real pressure to. Defensively, as I say, so strong. His passing is fantastic. Can play between the lines. You can very much say, and you know, it's 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 often a silly thing to say, but there are no real weaknesses or significant weaknesses in his game. Bar you would probably say the, the old adage or the thing that now keeps being said about anyone who plays in midfield: oh, he needs to he needs to score more, he needs to assist more. But you'd probably argue that is the only limitations, if anything, in his game that uh, really is probably why he's not. At an elite club right now, I'd say so. I think the um, the, it's it's kind of a case as well where stats kind of hide hide an element of the truth as well. I think when we talk about that aerial side of his game, it's very much masked by the fact that someone like Disassi mm -hmm. is so eager to get, is yeah. so eager to win balls in the air. Uh, he's and he's an absolute colossus, so you don't want to get in his way. But even if he does, you know, this is one thing that is good with Fafana and potentially if, if he came to West Ham, he does really listen to his teammate shouts. Yeah. Fafana goes up, you know, for every single ball that he can. And in that case, Fafana's just happy to drop off, collect up that second ball and, and you know, retain possession. Um, I don't know if it's true. I think it is, but I've also heard that he is on very, very low wages in terms of, um, you know, football players. I know it's silly money anyway, but isn't it? Yep. yeah, yeah. But... I think he's rumored to be on about four hundred grand a year, which is is not a lot for no. um, for the uh, sort of wages that we need. So when we're talking about the finances of the deal, that is really, you know. It's it's hens feed to most um, uh, Premier League sides, and if you it, it's the sort of signing where we could bring him in, and he's got a core group who will already know from the France setup, and you know having played in France, but also he's um, he's got that room to grow, and it's not going to really be that much of a challenge for him in terms of physicality because the French league as we've said a number of times, is so um, physic physically imposing and it's intense. Um, you need speed, you need power if you want to be a success there. So I think he may need to get a little bit quicker on the ball, but his technical ability is such that I don't think he'd have any issues with that whatsoever. Yeah, you know, I completely agree, spot on. It's, it is that <clears throat> type of thing where... He, as you say, the, the physical side, the the technical side, the French league is very, very similar to the Premier League, um, regardless of what people may suggest. They may call it a farmers league, but in fact, it's called the League of Talents for a reason. There, there are some incredible players, and 
from a, a physical and, and technical point of view, he has everything that you would need in a Premier League player. As you say, the, the pace is different. So again, you have to get used to that pace. That's what we saw with uh, Piquetta. Slightly marred by not necessarily being in his favoured position. But again, you get someone like Fafana and gets up to pace quickly, you have an absolute powerhouse in your midfield. Uh, the, then the question is as to, do you look to to upgrade on mm. the other side with uh, with Suchek? I think our opinion is you would. Um, but where, how would you, as a last kind of piece on him, how would you envision Fofana to be used if he was to play at West Ham? Do you see him as he'd be used as, as, a, as a six to, to marshal the, the defence? Because... You know, when you look at the heat map, for instance, you can see how much work he does. Obviously, he's predominantly on that right-hand side, but he covers, you know, the entire middle section of the pitch. Would you think he would be more used in that deeper six role, or do you think he would be uh, better utilised in an eight and maybe asked to do much of what we asked Declan Rice to do? Um, I think he, I think he'd probably be utilise a little bit more as a number six, just so that he does have that defensive mindset. But his athleticism is such that it is almost that rice role. It's the mm-hmm. ability to bound forward, take on a man, but also play that ball and keep up with play. Um, the qualities that he has really do allow himself uh, that freedom to... You know, if, if he said to Aguered, you go forward, I'll sit back, he can do that. Um, or if he said to, to both centre-backs, look, I'm going to push forward, one of you might want to step up and, re- and, uh, and read that, just sit where I am. He's fine, fine to do that. I don't really know what we would ask him to do if we want to be a little bit more defensive-minded just to cover the loss of Rice. But I do think... Um, He's got the versatility to be able to do both. I mean, in my in my perfect world, we do also sign another central defensive mid who's a bit more of a six in the terms that they're just happy to sit back. But, you know, I think this is a fantastic signing. And just to go back uh, to what you said about um, that cliche of the Farmers League, if anyone on here doesn't watch um, League On, please do, because it is a fantastic league. And... It's so much fun to watch. The The big difference between um, it and a team like as it, it and the league like La Liga is just that pretty much there is just one big dog in the league. And let's face it, we all know who that is. It's the big money powerhouse that is PSG. Um, but then you have, ev- you have about 10 teams who are just as good as each other, all fighting out for those European spots. Um, and that's why when when a side like Monaco finishes, you know, outside of Europe, it's not necessarily representative of the quality of the players they have. Yep. Um, it's just the fact that the league is so competitive. And you look at a side like Lons, um, where they have now qualified for the Champions League, um, and you look at the quality that they have, it's it's huge. It's it's not a case of um, the league is lacking in any way just because one team keeps winning. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm. That's where I'm gonna. I'm gonna leave. I'm not gonna do too much of a rant, but I do think. That <laughs> no, no, but no, it, think- it's, a, it's a fair point. It, it's because Monaco finished outside of the uh, Europe uh, European spaces isn't a representation of how good or how bad their players are. In fact, they've got some exceptionally good players. Three of those players, I would love to see at West Ham. Um, by the way, they're all in our in our list as well that we put out on Twitter. I pinned a uh, tweet, uh, Fred. But again, it's it's a league full of exceptionally good young talents. And it's a fantastic yeah. uh, development ground for young players, which is why teams like Monaco are producing players like Fofana or they're buying from other youth teams and then elevating that talent by giving them the development at a top level. I do think Fofana is a fantastic uh, option for us. He is probably one of the closest players mapped to Declan Rice. If you're looking at it from a pure statistic point of view, he is probably one of the closest in terms of within the bounds of reality for us and in terms of uh, you know budget. So it is a player that we should be all out for um, because 
we are losing such an exceptional talent. We need to bring in very high quality players. And those from the Premier League who have been linked, I do not feel are at the same level as a Fofana. Um, just because he's not in Europe or not playing in the Premier League, that should not be uh, viewed negatively at all. But uh, what do you guys think? Do you, you think Fafana is going to be a good good option? Would you like to see Fafana? Is there someone else that you would prefer to come in to, to replace one half of Declan Rice? Because as we say, you need two halves to replace Declan. Uh, who who would be your two as an option uh, going into the, uh, the next season? But yeah, guys, if you've liked this, please do obviously like please do subscribe all of those wonderful wonderful things if you're wondering where we are on twitter this is our twitter handle you can go on there and check out our huge thread on <laughs> players that we believe west ham should be kind of shortlisting and looking at this season and uh yeah with that sloth there's only one more thing to say and uh yeah you know what that is Come on, Come on, you